Hey guys, here we are once again in a familiar parking lot, Hustler Casino. Once again, I'm here to play some big games. Today is 2550 100, which I think is the second biggest game they get aside from the Friday stream. So today's session should yield some big results, whether good or bad is to be determined. Let's go inside. Well, actually, no, let's not go inside yet. Got to tell you guys one thing. I picked up a new camera uh, yesterday. I'm still in the process of learning how to use it, but Good news is all following videos on this channel should be top notch quality. Not that the quality hasn't been good so far, but this stuff is like gonna be cinema grade. You guys should see this thing. So keep an eye out for uh, the next video. For those of you guys who enjoy like cool looking footage and you're into, you know, high definition or whatever terms these uh, videographers use. If you guys are into that, keep an eye out. Next video should be completely different in terms of quality. But anyway, uh, that's enough talking. Let's go inside and gamble. All right, everyone, here we go again. Today we're playing 2550 100 with a $100 big blind Annie. As per usual, I sit with $100,000 and we are underway. In the first interesting hand, Sammy raises to $300. Mike calls in the big blind and I have queen six suited in the third blind. I think occasionally squeezing with this hand is okay since it doesn't play very well post flop, but calling seems all right too. That's what I do this time and instantly wish I had re-raised instead as we flop trips, queen, queen, eight with two spades out there. Action checks to Sammy the bull and he checks it back. Turn card is an ace of diamonds. Mike checks again and now I decide to bet. Could also be doing this with all sorts of draws and bad hands. So doing it with three of a kind seems okay too. $1,100 to go. Sammy calls, Mike gets out of the way. Seems to me at this point that Sammy's got an ace, so good so far. River is the four of clubs, complete brick, and it gives us the green light to go for some more value. If I had those missed draws like spades or straight draws, etc., I'd be going very big because my bet represents either a very bad hand or something real strong. With that in mind, I'm going to do the same when I actually have it. 150% the size of the pot, 4,800. Sammy announces that he should probably raise, but instead he will just call. Doesn't sound too good, and sure enough, that is explained when he turns over Queen Jack for a better three of a kind. Not a good start to the session, but at least we're getting the run bad out of the way. Later on, this hand goes down where Tal raises to 300, and I'm in middle position with Ace Jack offsuit. Doesn't really play very well as a call. I think re-raising or even folding against an early position open is best. Although, if I'm being honest, just calling in a game like this with ace jack can't be that bad. This time, however, I raise it up to $1,000 and only Tal makes the call, so we go heads up to a decent flop of queen 10-3. We've got a straight draw to the nuts as well as a board that I could represent some strong stuff on since I re-raised pre-flop. So with that in mind, I bet small 700, Tal makes the call. Looking for some help on the turn, but I'm probably gonna continue betting either way. Ace of hearts changes things though, because now we've actually got something pretty good. However, it's not the best hand I would have in this situation, at least for value. Could easily have some stronger stuff, but I still wanna keep betting for value since Tal could have a queen or even a smaller ace. For example, any suited ace with a backdoor flush draw that floats on the flop. Wouldn't be surprised to be up against that. So I decided to continue betting, this time $1,100. And once again, Tal makes the call. So it seems like if we were behind, he probably would have check raised. Feeling pretty confident about my hand and that does not change on the five of diamonds river. He checks it a third time. And even though it's a bit thin, I'm gonna go for some more value. Would hate to get check raised, but like I said, if he had a better hand, I suspect he would have raised on the turn. So I slide in $1,600, trying to target any worse hands. And after some thought, Tal does make the call. Seems like a good situation until he flips over the same hand. That's okay though. I feel like if he had a smaller ace, he would have called as well. So the plan did work out, but we just don't win that much money this time. This next hand, however, is way more interesting and it's actually the very next shuffle. Alec opens an early position to 300 and once again, I'm in middle position with a so-so hand, 8-7 suited. Again, just calling is probably fine in a game like this, going multi-way doesn't seem that bad, but with these kind of holdings, I like to mix between calling and re-raising, and this time I choose the aggressive route. $1,000 to go with my 8-7 of hearts, and instantly get punished as Tan makes it 3,300 on the button. 
That seems like a pretty good hand. Action gets back to Alec who folds his pocket eights and now it's my decision to make. Now I'll be the first to say that folding eight high against this sort of aggression and being out of position all seem like good criteria for a fold. But after some thought, I realized that Tan is the only other player at the table who's got a considerable amount of chips. In fact, he's got more than I have. And being that I think he's got a really strong hand like aces, kings, queens, maybe ace, king, we could win a really big pot if we get lucky with a hand like mine. So perhaps a bit questionable, but I decide to call and go to a flop. 10, 8, 5 with one heart. Not the worst thing in the world. We flop middle pair, so now we're beating hands like ace, king, or ace, queen suited. And we've got some backdoor possibilities as well with a heart and a 10 out there. I start by checking it over to Tan, and he bets $3,000. Already, I think you could go a few different ways. If I had a hand like pocket eights or pocket tens, I would certainly be check raising. And to balance that out, I'd also wanna do it with some bluffs. But maybe this exact hand isn't the best candidate to do it with, and even if it was, I wouldn't wanna check raise every single time. Instead, just calling also seems fine. That's what I do this time. And what do you know, we turn a very nice card, the Jack of Hearts, giving me a backdoor flush draw, as well as a straight draw if a nine were to come on the river. Not only that, but I feel like this card is a bit better for me than him. I could definitely have hands like Jack-10 suited, 9-7 suited, pocket jacks, pocket 10s, and still pocket 8s, maybe even pocket 5s a small percentage of the time, whereas my opponent is almost never going to have those hands. Instead, he's mostly just going to have an over pair, which at this stack depth could get a little bit treacherous for him. So even though checking seems okay, I decide to instead lead for a small size, $4,000, but Tan is having none of it. Instead, he raises to 13,000. At this point, it seems very obvious to me that we are behind against aces, kings, or maybe queens. So what do we do? Well, like I just finished explaining, I feel like I could have all sorts of strong stuff on this board. So even though I do have quite a few outs and calling seems fine, I decide to take the aggressive route and re-raise again on this turn card. But I don't wanna go too big because what I'd like to do is leave enough chips behind that we could get him to fold on the river with an all-in. I feel like calling with one pair for this much money is gonna be pretty dicey for him. So after a few seconds of thinking it over, I raise it up again, $29,000 to go, hoping to put him in a miserable situation with a hand like exactly what he's got. And what do you know, after a few seconds, Tan decides to fold his pocket kings. So we don't end up relying on plan B, which was making our hand. Instead, we take down this one with third pair. Happy with this result. A while later, we do a round of straddles and yours truly is in the straddle with pocket jacks. Sammy raises the button to 500. My hand is definitely good enough to re-raise, so I make it 2,500 and he makes the call. Heads up to a flop of 9-4 deuce with two hearts. I've got a pair bigger than all those cards, so I continue betting $3,000, and Sammy calls. This could be a good or bad news type of situation. I suspect he would do this with all flop sets, but also with all single pair holdings and any draws he might have. So I suspect we've still got the best hand. However, when the eight of clubs comes on the turn, this board is a lot better for him than it is for me now. And if he has a draw, I think there's more value in checking and letting him start bluffing. So I check, but Sammy is not interested in any of that and he checks it right back with his pair of fours. River is the king of spades. And once again, I think Sammy could have some strong hands that perhaps were a bit deceptive on this turn card. As you guys remember, in the first hand, he checked back the flop with three of a kind, so I know he's a sneaky player. I'd rather not bet and get raised by a better hand or maybe be put in a tough spot by a worse hand. And I don't really think there's much value in betting if he does have a mediocre pair. So again, I check it. Sammy is not overthinking the way I am. He just checks it right back and we end up winning against ace four of diamonds. Not a huge pot, but we pick up $5,000. I'll take it. In the following hand, Alec opens the button to $300 and I'm looking down at a suited king in the small blind. Almost always, it's probably best to just let this one go, but against the button open, I think suited kings are good candidates to occasionally squeeze with. And that's what I do this time, 1500 to go. Alec thinks about it for a while and ends up deciding to call. So all right, we go heads up to a decent flop of 1095 with a diamond. So we've got bottom pair and some backdoor possibilities. Unless he's flopped a pair or maybe he's got like sevens or sixes, maybe pocket eights. I suspect we'll have the best hand and still could have all sorts of over pairs to represent. So I start with a small bet. Alec makes the call. 
Looking for a good turn card, and that's sort of what we get. It's the 10 of hearts, so we were already losing to a 10. I guess now it's less likely he's got one. However, I think the best play here is to check it over to him. He's going to have a 10 a lot more often than I would. And if he doesn't have a 10, he might start bluffing with all sorts of hands he could have floated with on the flop that try to steal it later on, such as Queen Jack suited, maybe Jack 8 suited, 6 7. You guys get the idea. I check it over to him. Alec is not interested in bluffing. Instead, he checks it back. And we make an interesting full house on the river as the five of hearts comes out. Now it's a question between checking again or making a value bet. After Alec checks back the turn, I suspect he's got some sort of showdown value. Otherwise, he probably would have started bluffing. So with that in mind, I decide to bet small and target all those hands that checked back on the turn, hoping to get to showdown. As the one he's got, ace high. I thought maybe he had a hand like pocket sevens or so, but nope, just ace eight of spades. Not the best hand, so it's no surprise that he ends up letting it go. Next, I get dealt a hand that's much better than king five. Henry opens to 300, Mike calls in the small blind, and I've got pocket queens in the big blind. Raise it up to 2200. And interestingly enough, Henry himself has got the king five suited this time and decides to get frisky by kicking it up to $6,000. Again, this is an opponent who's got quite a few chips behind, so when Mike gets out of the way, I decide to proceed with just a call. Don't really know if putting in another raise of my own makes much sense. 9-4 deuce with two diamonds seems pretty good for my pocket queens. If he's got aces or kings, so be it, but for the most part, I suspect we'll be ahead. I check, and Henry checks it back. Turn card is the 10 of spades. Could be a little dicey if he's got a hand like pocket tens, but he most likely would have bet the flop with that hand. Now it's on me again, and I could certainly have all sorts of bluffs at this point, like Queen Jack suited, maybe some small suited connectors that want to start bluffing. So with pocket queens, I think it's also okay to bet, get some protection from overcards, and maybe get some value from non-believing ace highs. I put in a bet of $4,000, only one third the size of the pot. Henry is not interested and just lets it go. Again, not a crazy hand, but we pick up $6,500. So far, so good today. A few rounds later, we once again get pocket queens. This time we're in a straddle round, so I raise it up from early position to 600, and only Mike calls in the straddle. Wow, once again, we're up against king five. It seems like that's the hand of the day. Anyway, we go to a flop of a seven five deuce with two spades. He checks, and I bet $1,300. It's not rocket science. I've got an overpair, and I'm trying to get some value. Mike calls, and we don't get the best turn card, the four of clubs. So now the most obvious straight draw on the flop improves, eight six, of course. And we could also be up against hands like ace three, seven five, seven four, a flop set that plays in a sneaky fashion. So yeah, all in all, this is a pretty dicey card, if I'm being honest. But that being said, I know Mike plays a lot of hands, so instead of checking back, I decide to continue betting for value and target all his single pair holdings, as well as any draws he could have just called with on the flop. 3600 is the price to go, and after some thought, Mike check raises to $8,000. This, of course, is the problem with betting bad turn cards. You can get put in tough positions as I have here. I didn't expect Mike to do this with a single pair holding. So after a little bit of thought, as tight as it seems, I just let it go since I think it's most likely we're behind all those hands I just mentioned. But what do you know, Mike decided to check raise with second pair. Not entirely sure if he was trying to bluff me off or if he thought he had the best hand. He later on said he put me on ace high and just believed he was ahead, but who knows? Mike is a tricky guy. He probably knows exactly what he was doing. <laughs> nice hand, Mike. And with that, we move to this one where there's a race to 600, once again in a straddle round. I call in the big blind with pocket sixes, as do a few other players. So we go four ways to this flop, which comes down pretty interesting. It's eight, five, four with two clubs. I've got pocket sixes with a club. And without getting too nerdy, all this means is it's very unlikely someone has flopped the nuts, which would be seven, six, as I can account for two of the sixes. So that's what I'm thinking as action checks all the way to Tal in late position. He bets $1,000, and I think it's most likely he's doing this with a hand better than pocket sixes, like any eight or maybe even pocket nines or tens that doesn't squeeze pre-flop. And I think right here, right now, is the time to start applying pressure. We can represent all sorts of stuff, maybe even a flush later on. Maybe we improve to a set. Maybe we improve to a straight. Who knows? Endless possibilities. What I don't want to do is check call out of position with second pair. Instead, I raise it up to $5,000. As you guys can see, Tal's got a pretty tough hand, 8-7. He's got a straight draw. He's got top pair. He has some removal to the nuts himself. I wouldn't blame him for continuing, but instead, he gets out of the way, and we take this one down. 
And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we move to the last interesting hand of this particular stream. Again, in a straddle round, I raise it up to $600 this time with Jack, nine of spades, a pretty hand, you might say. Nick calls in late position with ace nine, and then Henry squeezes from the big blind to $4,000. He's got pocket tens, certainly can't blame him. Action is now back on me. As you guys can see, we both have plenty of chips, so I think calling with hands like mine is okay, but if I'm being honest, I'd rather do it with some better hands than jack nine suited, maybe like 10 nine suited or seven six suited, hands that are a bit more connected and easier to flop some stuff with. Jack nine, eh, I don't know, a bit questionable, but I decide to call and Nick gets out of the way. Again, don't hate my play, but if I'm being real, I'd probably take this call back. But either way, here we are, heads up to a flop of 9-6-4 with one spade. So we flop top pair and a backdoor flush draw. Henry bets $3,000, and for a split second, I consider raising right here, right now. Mostly because he's almost never going to have any sets on this board, whereas I could easily have all three available sets. So how cool would it be to just turn my 9 into a bluff and hopefully get him to fold an over pair, considering how much money we have behind? However, after a few seconds, I realized that I have a plenty strong hand to just call with. We're still beating all sorts of bluffs, including ace highs or flush draws. So I decided to just call in position and we go to a turn. Deuce of diamonds should change absolutely nothing. And now Henry checks it over to me. I suspect he would do this with over pairs as well as ace king, ace queen type hands. Maybe even the occasional ace four suited or ace two suited that's got a pair but doesn't want to continue betting. Now as for me, I could easily have some strong stuff here. I could have some bluffs. I could have some middle strength pairs like the one I have in this situation. And I think with all those hands as a collective, the best play would be to bet small. This leaves my hand still disguised in my opinion and also leaves some options on the river. So after some brief calculating, I put in a bet of $4,500, a little less than a third of the pot. Wouldn't be surprised if Henry folded right here since like I said, I think he could have hands like ace king or ace queen, but after he calls, I do think he's got a pair of some sort. River is the four of clubs, doesn't really change much unless we were up against ace four suited. When he checks it now, I don't really know if there's value in betting again, even though we do have top pair, so I check it back right away. And we end up losing to pocket tens, a slightly better pair than a nine. And therein lies the problem of playing hands like jack nine suited in a re-raised pot. Oftentimes when you flop top pair, you're not exactly sure where you stand. Alas, that was the last interesting one of this session. Sadly, we give back a lot of the winnings in this one, but still end up making a small profit. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed the hands. All right, back at the apartment, finished playing like 30 minutes ago. Game unfortunately broke right when the stream ended, so here we are back home. Today was interesting. It was uh, actually not a wild result, as I predicted at the start of the video. I ended up winning $4,665. Of course, no small chunk of change, but given the size of the game, it's essentially break even. That's okay, I'm more worried about the process than the result, if that makes sense. Either way, uh, that's it for today, guys. Next video is gonna be uh, the 2550 private game that I'm organizing at Hustler. It's gonna be the first one, and I'm gonna bring you guys along for the ride. By the way, if you're interested in jumping into that game, it's gonna be every Sunday at 2 p.m. Message me on Instagram, the link is down below. I have an interest list put together. It's uh, quite a big list, but it's not impossible for you guys to get in. So if you're local and you wanna jump into that game, let me know and be on the lookout for uh, that next video because I'll be filming with this guy. This is the new camera that I mentioned to you guys. This thing is an absolute beast. So I'm pretty excited to introduce that new level of quality to the vlog. Anyway, that's enough talking. I'm gonna play some video games and go to bed. Until next time, good luck at the tables. Peace.